أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How's everybody doing? Alhamdulillah, night number 19, subhanAllah Did we end off anything interesting yesterday? SubhanAllah So we mentioned the, perhaps the worst moment in our history as an ummah Basically, since the demise of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we could say no catastrophe was worse than those 30 years in the middle of the um, 13th century where Andalusia fell and then the Mongolians first destroyed Khawarizm and they came back <laughs> to 20 years later to destroy Baghdad. Every single major city left in ruins, massacring the whole population, destroying a thousand years of legacy of learning. And our Khalifa, the Khalifa of the Ummah, even though he was nominal, but it was someone at least, someone that for the first time in the history of Islam, did a foreign army enter the capital of, 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 uh, of Islam and kill its Khalifa. This was something unique. And we mentioned how <coughs> they moved, the Mongolians, of, uh, f- they moved through the Muslim lands, through Naishapur, Bukhara, Persia, modern day Iraq, they enter into Syria, and there's only one last little kingdom left, the Ayyubid kingdom, which Salahuddin had established. This is the last kingdom that remains, and the Mongolians send a letter basically saying, submit or die. You are the last to remain. The historians at the time believed this was Qiyamah, and they believed this is the end of Islam. This was the Ajuj and Ajuj. They mentioned that people were so weak that a Mongolian lady, she would line up a hundred men, and she would execute them, one by one, until her sword, her knife became blunt. She said, the rest of you wait, I'll come back. And she'll come back the next day and they'll still stand there waiting to be slaughtered. They wouldn't even have the courage to run away. So the Ummah was at this low point. So what happens? Where do we go from here? So we said Egypt is the last man standing really. Egypt, Egypt and uh, remember Salahuddin ruled Egypt and Syria, the Ayyubid dynasty. Obviously, when this happens, or just before this happened, there's a crusade going on, and there's internal civil war, as you would, you know, just before the Mongolians arrive. So we turn the clock back about 10 years before the Mongolians sack Baghdad. What's going on in the Ayyubid dynasty? The Ayyubid dynasty is broken. It has an Amir in Syria, an Amir in, in Egypt, and they're fighting one another. And <clears throat> the Amir of, 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 um, of Syria, of Egypt, the Amir of Egypt, is basically on the losing end. And... Um, the Ayyubids also had a, a policy of, because they couldn't trust one another, everyone is trying to outdo one another, the only people they could trust were their personal slaves. And they established a group called the Mamluks. Mamluk actually means a slave, you're owned. They would, there were many refugees, people that were enslaved. Remember the Mongolians are coming. And they are capturing and enslaving millions of people and selling them. So the slave markets are full of these captured people. The Ayyubids bought a lot of these slaves, children, with the intention of training them, the boys, into warriors and and administrators, and they would be completely loyal to the Amir, the Sultan. Because you can't trust your brother, but you can trust your Mamluk. And so the uh, uh, um, Ayyubids had a bureauc- or a soldier group called the Mamluks. Also, the Queen of Egypt, another interesting character, this lady, her name was uh, uh, Ismat ad-Din, her, t- uh, her name is Shajar ad-Dur, the, pearl, the, the tree of pearls. She was a slave girl given to the Amir of, of, of Egypt, and very smart, very intelligent, obviously she's beautiful, you, you know, you're not going to be given a gift uh, uh, unless she was pretty. And within one year she went from being a concubine slave to being the wife of the Amir. Very smart, very clever. She became the Queen of Egypt. Now. <clears throat> When the Amir of Egypt was being ousted by his fellow uh, Syrians, she encouraged him to bring more of these Mamluks. She's also a Mamluk. She's from this, this, this clo- and the Mamluks actually come from the Caucasus Mountains, Ukraine. So these are European features, but they're Muslim. You know, they are indoctrinated to be Muslim from ch- ch- children. And she says, bring more of my people, and this is the people around uh, uh, um, the Amir of Egypt. So finally, he is able to come, with the help of his Mamluks, he's able to regain his position in Egypt. And just as he arrives, the king of France invades Egypt for a seventh crusade. I mean, by now, the, you know, the Europeans, haven't, they're still into this thing. And they invade Egypt. And as the king of France arrives, this is 10 years before Baghdad is, 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 is destroyed. He arrives in Egypt. The king of Egypt, the Amir of the Ayyub, he dies. He dies of a disease. So the queen assembles the Mamluks. She's a Mamluk, a slave origin. They were, I mean, they were bought and sold as children. And she said, look, an army has come. If we tell our people that the, just as the crusaders arrived, that the king is dead, you know, Egypt is basically going to give up. What are we going to do? 
So the Mamluks agree, we'll keep the news of the Amir being de dead, we'll keep it secret, and we will run the government. And we are going to try and stop the king of France ourselves. And he was the most powerful monarch in, 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 uh, in Europe. And subhanAllah, you even have his letter, when he wrote a letter to, uh, he wrote a letter, what he thinks is the king of Egypt, but of course the king is dead. Um, he says, I I've warned you many times, and I've given you a lot of, uh, um, that even if you come to me now, expressing your Christian, even if you converted to Christianity, we will not spare you and your people. Look at, and he says, look at what we've done to your people in Andalusia. We have made their women widows, we have made their children orphans, we are basically making them Christian, and the same will be done to you, that my soldiers will fill your fields, and you are basically, you have no chance against us. I'm not even giving you the option of surrender, I'm going to kill you. So the king of France, extremely arrogant, he comes with his army, he arrives, and he conquers one city after the other, and now he's marching towards the capital of Egypt, Al-Mansura. The Mamluks, I mean, these guys were bred purely for fighting. And they said they've got a, a plan. What, they going, what, what they, their plan is, allow him to invade the capital. Allow the army to enter the capital without resistance. He thinks there's no resistance, there's no army, let him come in. And the minute he enters Mansoura, he finds the city is deserted, and they shut him in. And basically a trap. And from all corners, the Mamluks basically descend on them. They burn his ships, and the entire army of the Crusaders is destroyed. Even the king of France himself is captured, and they ransom him back to France for one-third of its GDP. Right, so the Mamluks completely, and this was a, the queen of Egypt, a slave woman, and the Mamluks basically completely destroy the Seventh Crusade. When they apply to the Khalifa, is still there, this is before the Mongolians, right? They apply to the Khalifa of Baghdad and say, look, we, the Ayyubids is no more. We are now the custodians of Egypt. They found it extremely offensive. How can you slaves want to be in charge of Egypt? And a woman on top of that, because they established there as queen first. So she said, fine, I'll abdicate. I'll put one of the other Mamluks. They said, no. So they were not going to recognize them, and they said, you bring one of the Syrian Ayyubids to come and take over Egypt. They said, no problem, we'll bring an Ayyub, Ayyubid and do this. And they completely disgraced them, looked down on them that these are slaves, these are of no use. Then the Mongolians arrive into Baghdad. That same Khalifa that rejected the Mamluks, as we said yesterday, wrapped up in a carpet and rode to death, and the entire Baghdad is collapsed. They invade Syria, the Ayyubids surrender completely. They said, we want nothing, we're not going to fight. Go ahead, Mamlu uh, 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 Mongolians, you can take over. The Mamluk says, no, we are not going to surrender. We will not surrender. So they are in Egypt, this tiny, this last bastion of, of, of resistance. Slaves bought and sold. They are the ones, they get the letter. So the Mongolians send a letter to the Mamluks, and again, a, a very fiery letter. It says to them, uh, the, the Mongolian uh, ruler writes to him, and he says, we, there is not a single country in the world that stood against us and survived. You are a bunch of slaves. Our, my forces are like the pebbles on the ground. You have one last chance to surrender, hand Egypt over to us, or we will exterminate everyone in Egypt, and we will destroy every mosque in Egypt, and we will have, there will be nothing left but ruin. And we're not, we're not, we're not, it's not a warning, it's a promise. You can count the cities. Look at what we did to China. Bukhara, Naishapur, Baghdad, your Khalifa could not stand against us. Syria could not stand, you think you're gonna stand against us. So the, Mong, the Mamluks, they have this delegation of Ambassadors from Mongolia uh, uh, um, asking what should they do. The Mamluks discuss what should we do. So <coughs> the leader of the Mamluks, his name is Baybars. Basically, it means the, the head panther. And, he, uh, and it's his, these, these, these tight titles, right? He's the guy that strategized the defeating of the Crusaders. And they said, look, if we're going to make a decision, we're going to make a firm decision. We are not people to surrender. We're not only going to say no. We're going to do exactly what's going to guarantee our death is we will say no by executing the ambassadors and we'll send their body parts back in half to the Mongolians. This is our response. Now remember, this is why originally Genghis Khan invaded Islam, invaded the Muslim Ummah because the Amir killed one of his ambassadors. Babers kills all of the ambassadors that comes from the Mongolians, send them back in bags to the Mongolians, says, bring it, bring it. So who is this guy Babers? He's, as we said, a child slave who was bought by the Ayyubids, trained his whole life in warfare, completely disciplined him and his, his um, uh, uh, regiment. 
rises up to be the chief general of, of, of the Ayyubids, and now he's in charge of trying to strategize and trying to stop the most powerful army in the world with a very small group of Mamluks that they have. So the armies of Mongolia move through Syria. Every, every city, every village capitulates, gives in, and they move towards Jerusalem. The Mamluks send their army towards to meet them. They don't want to meet them in Egypt. They say, we will meet them in, in uh, uh, Jerusalem and, or in Palestine. And they, just as it would be Qadr Allah, they, the place in which they meet is called Ain Jalut. It's the place where Nabi Dawood killed Goliath. Ain Jalut, the spring of Goliath. That's the name of the place. That's where they, they uh, uh, meet the Mongolian army. And, <coughs> and we have a lot of details with regards to this battle. Very, it requires. So the strategy was this: the Mongolians know that we are much less, and they are so confident that once they see us retreating, they would push and they want to destroy us completely. Look, they're not going to leave any one of us alive, so they're going to go after us. We want to retreat in a way where we put them into a trap. So we have to, and this is it requires a lot of precision. You need to fight and kind of lose tactically, give ground tactically, so that they feel that they are moving and, 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 and overrunning you until they find themselves into a trap. And this is exactly what Babers did with his Mamluks, extremely disciplined warriors. They had a gradual defeat, slowly but surely, until the, Mamlu the Mongolian army was in a ridge, and then the rest of the Mamluks basically surrounded them. And the Mongolians were not going to give up. They fought, in fact, they said, they got off their horses. Now, when they get off their horses, because these are horse people, they spend more time on the horse than on the ground. When they get off the horse, that means we're going to fight hand to hand. We are not going to run back. And so the Mongolian army fought to the bitter end, but they were defeated. The first time in the history, for the last 50 years, a Mongolian army was stopped. The, the Mamluks defeated them. And it showed the world that these people are not invincible, that they can be defeated, and that a superior class of soldier was out there, and with that, the Mongolians were then, this stopped their advance. And as we said, this was the last ditch between Mongo, the, Mongo, the Mongol army, Jerusalem, Mecca, and Medina. Because the objective was, we're going to destroy Jerusalem, we'll destroy Mecca and Medina, and we'll end Islam. This was the stated objective, we're going to end your religion. And the Mamluks stopped them. These, the same slaves that the rest of the kings and the Khalifa said, there's no way you guys can be recognized as the rulers. After they had defeated, uh, the, obviously the Mongolians are not done yet, this was just one of the armies at Ain Jalut, Babers becomes the Amir of, 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 of the Ayyubid the Ayyub dynasty now ends. This is where Salahuddin's dynasty ends and the Mamluks take over, a new dynasty. They rule Egypt and they take control of Syria and they systematically push the Mongolians out of every, out of every uh, city. Remember the Crusaders were allied with the Mongolians. He does away with all the Crusader states and he sets up the, Mon the Mamluk kingdom now. It's designed to, def to defend itself against any Mongol invasion. He restructured the entire empire or the entire dynasty so that he learned from every every invasion what the Mongolians would do they would invade a city at a time if all these cities were able to you rally quickly you can't defeat everybody and so he devised an extremely efficient way of how to alert with towers and with a, a, a very quick spy network that when the Mongolians came and they invaded many times, he was able to dispatch battalions and regiments to stop them. And of course, to show how effective, they continued to fight the Mongolians for another 30 years and they only lost one battle against the Mongolians. They defeated the Mongolians every single time. Mongolians could not defeat or break the Mamluks. The only person that eventually defeated the Mamluks, Napoleon Bonaparte, when he invades Egypt, in the 19th century with cannons, defeats the Mamluks. And even he said, when I saw these men, they were a class of their own. Their ability, their strength, their riding ability, but of course against a cannon, there's not much you can do against a cannon. And this, once again, as we said, and now you're going to, when we talk about, as we get closer to our time, the caliphate now shifts from Baghdad to Egypt for a brief period of time. The Khalifa now, 
some obscure member of the Abbasid family is found, some distant cousin's nephew who is somehow related to the Khalifa. He is brought to Egypt, and that is the Khalifa in name, but the Mamluks, of course, rule. And Baybars, uh, this man, uh, um, one, of the, one of the few people in history who had the honor of defending both Jerusa Jerusalem, Mecca, and Medina, and he builds all these masajid, he builds, he expands the haram of Mecca and Medina, and of course, removes the crusaders from the Levant. And uh, really is amazing in terms of the bureaucracy and the strategy, the structures that he had. And I said it stood until the colonial period, until Napoleon comes in the 19th century, the, Mon the Mamluks are still there, and they're still ruling Egypt. And uh, uh, Babers eventually, of course, dies, and he's buried next to Salahuddin, buried right next to Salahuddin in Egypt. And so, uh, subhanAllah, things that we've learned from the most unexpected places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep this ummah together. Hadith, we've not added in here, there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Nabi sallam says, Allah rolled the world out in front of me. And I saw the easternmost places and the westernmost places. And I saw my ummah expanding to every corner of the world. And then I made dua, Ya Allah, let my ummah never be destroyed by a single enemy. Let not an enemy destroy us completely. And let not one natural disaster wipe us out completely. And Allah responds and says, your ummah will reach the ends of the world. No enemy will ever destroy and wipe them out. And no natural disaster will ever wipe them out. But what will remain in them is fighting amongst themselves. This will remain until Qiyamah. And as we can see, Sadaq Allah, Sadaq Rasulullah Sallallahu exactly as the Prophet predicted it said, this is what we see in the Ummah. No enemy will ever wipe this Ummah out. No, no matter how weak we are, Allah will cause some one to stand up against the enemies. But the weakness lies internally. And we ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us strength once again. We continue tomorrow, inshallah, and we'll talk about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in the next revival on our series. Uh, last night's question. Um, who was the Mongol ruler when the Khawarizm Empire in Sint uh, was invaded? Who, who, who was the ruler of the Mongolians? Of course, it's Genghis Khan, um, a man who has uh, basically killed more people in history than anybody else. And then um, we asked today, today's question, at which battle did Baber stop Qiyamah? Remember the ulama believe this is Qiyamah. In fact, they wrote this Ya'ajuja Ma'ajuj. This is Ya'ajuja Ma'ajuj. They believe it's Qiyamah. At what place is it? Ain Baybars, Ain Qiyamah, Ain Jalut, Ain, Ain Mongol. So there's an easy question. Uh, the two yellows are the same. Two yellows are the same. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Abdul Malik Osman is not here. He was here yesterday. Abdul Malik is not here today. Yasin Francis. Mashallah to Yasin. Warda Nakadin? She here? Not yet tonight. Alma Sali? Not yet tonight either. Uh, okay. We have the same names, eh? Auntie Farida again. <laughs> she wanted to say. Sakina, Sakina Asmal? Is she, she's the upstairs? No, we don't know. It's his mom. Oh, okay. Inshallah, Sakina, Jazakallah Khair. We continue tomorrow. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, wa sallam, 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 wa